Hi guys, welcome to this week's PowerParts.co.uk video. Today we're going to be looking at the install of cold water feed supplies to a bottom entry and a side entry toilet. We're also going to be talking about the water regs and laws that we have to start adhering to by installing some of these products that I've got behind us today. Also I'm going to be showing you how to do like basic plumbing as well, just going up to the toilets. It's going to be a great laugh. So please hit the subscribe button, please hit the notification so you know that we've got a new video out there'll be a lovely song at the end of this video as well selected by my patrons links to all that at the end of the video let's get on with it and remember to hold tight remember you can take some time to explore our interactive house to learn more about the plumbing in your home so what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? Well, what's happened in the past is you can get water systems that overflow and overflow, and then you get backflow down the water pipe back into your cold water system. And it was called blue water because people started to notice this blue tinge in the water that was coming from those like blue tablets that you can put in the water tank. So what this does, the Air Gap 6000, uh, what a name, eco-friendly universal system delay fill valve does, what that does is allows us to have an air gap so that water when it's coming up never gets to get into the the water supply before it goes to the overflow which is really really important so you can install one of these to go up with British Standard 1212 and for today's video I've got a few different types here so I thought maybe you'd like to have a quick look and just see what they all look like now number one for me if I'm going to be installing these it's going to be the brass shank one especially if you're down on a toilet where you can't see the thread very well you're putting a brass nut onto plastic thread so always try to go for the brass shanked one that is hundred percent the best thing to do now the first thing I notice is that it's got this special kind of shape on here now what that is doing, what I've found out that it's doing, is it's making the water go in like a spiral vortex which keeps it from splashing about everywhere and it directs it straight into this hole here that feeds down through the bottom of this particular valve and then allows you to fill the water up. There's a tiny hole on the bottom of this cup and when that cup fills up, as a normal quick close fill valve will do, it will lift up our float and shut our water off. So the first few things you need to know is that number one, there's not going to be any splash. Number two, we've got the air gap. And number three, it's going to fill up at full speed all the way right up to the last section, which is what you want when you've got a toilet that's being used frequently um, or anywhere really. Uh, we've got a few adjustments on here. We can adjust the height of this valve just by popping this up here and then pulling this out. So look how high that is when we push that there and pop that down. So all in all, this is like the full solution. And another little thing, just a nice thick rubber on the bottom, which I like. Also a big diameter because sometimes toilets have a ridiculously large hole and it's nice to have a large rubber on there to make sure you cover that up when you're tightening it up. So really, really impressed with that. So that's the Air Gap 6000, right? And really the other ones that we've got here today are all the same sort of type. This is the side entry one, exactly the same kind of way of working. We've got that vortex bit of water on it. We've got it falling down here so it's silent. We've got the small hole in the bottom allowing us to fill up our little float chamber and then when that gets to the top boom, that turns off like that and we can adjust the height of the fill here again brass shank all the way massive fans of brass shank so the side entry is also catered for and then i've got another one of these here that i'm actually going to be giving away to my patrons on the ale army next thursday so Click the link, get involved later on, all right? Don't let me down, guys. So we've got these BSAT now. We know what they're doing. We know how they're going to work. How about we install these two toilets behind us? I'll install them exactly how I'd install them in someone's house, apart from the four inch, which is gonna run across the floor outside the main door of the studio. But you'll be able to see exactly how these work, why they're so good, and what they're achieving by having this air gap in there, but also doing it in a quiet, quick fill way with the brass shank. So let's get these toilets installed, let's get the pipe work in, then I'll install these for you so you can learn how to install one of these valves, and then I'll show you how to adjust them and how they work. So the two toilets I'm installing today, we've got a close coupled beast, very modern, with a standard flush in it, push button flush, and I've also put in a standard flush in here as well, with a plastic shank and just a normal type of fill valve that you're gonna find in a lot of properties. Then we've got an old school, almost I'd call it a nana toilet, with the standard system that's up in the air, We've got a side entry fill valve on there and we're going to change that over for one of the brass ones in a minute. Um, and that's a lot more traditional. So they're the two loos we've got. A couple of little things I like to say about this type of toilet is that we always have, and you're going to see it in a minute, 
this here has to fit into another hole and then you have your connection feed going on there. If you can, make the connection that goes onto the bottom of this loo, make it so it is a flexi. Because later on when you come to do any work, to get under there on rigid pipe, to undo that is not gonna be easy and you'll see why. Anyway, I'm just gonna pop this up now. We're just gonna get it all installed. Then I'm gonna put my four inch in. All the tools that I use in this video, my tool bag, my grips, my pipe champ, all that sort of stuff, you can buy on our Amazon store, along with these fill valves and these flush units as well. So let's get on with the video, let's get on with installing, let's do a bit of plumbing guys, and let's hold tight. Let's see, is that gonna fit there? Yeah. Loads of room. Let's see if I can get a flexi on that. Also, just hold on, let me just stop this. Also, I'm listening to Max Hastings' All Hell Let Loose at the moment on Audible. I'll also leave a link to that on our Amazon store as well because you can get some Audible stuff from us. I do like a little wee bit of Audible. Anyway, I've got the joy of doing this at the moment. I love doing this bit. You have to be a ventriloquist. No, not a ventriloquist, an escape artist. Ooh, down you go. This is by far the most fun bit of plumbing ever, getting underneath the toilet, getting those screws in between the cistern and the toilet itself, and then getting back above level to make sure the screws are into the wall. Right, okay, so that's toilet number one. Like actually up against the wall and everything. Everything's in there okay. I think you're gonna be proud of me here as well with my rudimentary little bit of four inch pipe just to get this demonstration made for you. Oh. Often you'll see people using tap washers and then a nice little penny washer to make a, a really good little fix in if you're using like big wood screws like this, but also to make it so you, you don't damage the porcelain or anything like that. I and mean, look, when we do it up in a minute, you'll see why. I mean, if I had a bigger washer, a bigger rubber washer, that'd be great, but beggars cannot be chosen. I've made my centre line here. I've got my other line on here just like that. Now I can just use my knee if I want to bring this up to where I want it to be. Now, if I really want to make sure, I can pop this back on here like so. And look, I can move this up and down to where I want it. Really, I can just pin one side now and then the other side in a sec. Now, I've got a small problem here. Obviously, I've got a valve in the way. So to whip the valve off, just take this other nut out like that. This is the plastic shanked version, but we won't be fitting that today. It's just they do do a plastic shanked version. You know which one I'm going to buy. Brass shanked all the way. I'm just lowering that down with my knee now. There we go, look at that. Absolutely plum. Plum LBW. Ooh, get ready to have a look at this tool. Now I've got a little set of these Rothenberger cutters, okay? They do inch and a quarter and inch and a half, or if you want to say 35 mil and 40 mil, you can stretch them a bit sometimes. Let me just make sure I've got that where I want it. Then I can just marry this up with my eyes from the edge of that. Back onto there, see that? I've got my thumb just marking that there. Now I know exactly where I want to cut this. These things are wicked. Just clip it on, bosh, like that. And then just twist. It's like a pipe slice, but for plastic pipe. How cool is that? This bit will go in here like that, and then up into our flush. And then we just do it the other way around. So we measure from there, from that bit of the pipe. You know that goes up into the flush quite nicely there. I'm just gonna give that a little bit more. It does show as well how useful it is to have a set square on your bag. Um, I use a set square a lot for my um, pipe bending, things like that. I think it's really handy for that sort of thing. So look, I can lay that out there, just eye that up, eye that up, hand on there, pop this on there like so. Look, I'll just twist that a few times and you get a real clean cut. There we go. Always dismantle these first. Pull these right back out of the way, right down, because you can see this will go quite a long way up into that. And then pop that into there. That's packed in at the back, and then you can push this up, and then you can say for sure with your eye that the rubber seal is up there now, and that this can go on, and that this can all now tighten up nicely, ready for in a minute when we actually pipe up our toilets and everything. All I've got to do now is just pop this elbow on here and then run a couple of bits of four inch out through the door like that. Then we can do a little bit of 15 mil pipe work, which I know you guys love watching. Woohoo guys, look at that. Oh my God, have you ever seen a toilet waste that does this? So then I've now got a fairly unusual toilet arrangement. You know, I'm a big fan of grey soil onto like white Osma fittings. I don't think I've ever even seen them before. It's pretty random. So look, what we're gonna do, we're going to run our mains in, it's just that there. 
We're going to elbow across along here. We're going to tee up and feed this little feed beast here. And then obviously we've got our nice little flexi just on there. And then we're going to pop our flexi in there like so. What I would say is in a normal situation, a house situation, the flexible pipe, I would try and pipe up so you couldn't really see it. So what I might do is I, I might have do dove down under the floor and then back up behind the toilet just to make sure you couldn't see that because flexi's a little bit pooey. But at the same time, you need the flexi there because if there's a problem with this loo here, you need to, be, you need to easily be able to undo that bit of flexible pipe and then undo those two screws, and then the two screws holding the cistern onto the toilet, so then you can lift it all up nice and easily. So, let's do a lovely bit of pipe work, let's do a bit of brass sewing as well. Also, this is the UE Boom 2 that I use for work. I've got a couple of others, um, yeah, even all the speakers I use are on the Amazon stores. Audible, Max Hastings, all hell let loose. Lovely eight hours and 38 minutes left of World War II characteristic national mix of the period, Australian pilot. So while we're doing that, let's have a little talk about leaky loos and the water that you can lose if everything goes completely mental, because these are some crazy facts here. So according to WaterWise, approximately 30% of total water used in the home is to flush the toilet. Apparently between five and 8% of UK toilets are leaking, which is horrible. And WaterWise states that around 400 million litres of water are estimated to leak from UK toilets every day, which is enough to supply the water for 2.8 million people. So this is a big problem. They also say that a toilet that is constantly leaking clean water from the cistern into a pan can waste around 200 to 400 litres of water a day. So that's a fairly flat out leak and could add around 300 pounds a year to a metered water bill if left unfixed. One in 20 households have a leaky loo and yet they often go unnoticed. So if you want to learn how to spot a leaky loo, listen for the sound of a trickle at the back of the toilet pan. That's an obvious sign there's something not right. However, some leaks are silent and easy to miss. Always run your hands around the feed pipe, the soil pipe and the fill pipe. And once you've done that, check your hand to see if there's any water on there. And also double check to make sure it's not a condensation issue. Once you've done that, of course, wash your hands. Once you've fixed the leaky toilet, it's probably a good idea you pop in a new valve, especially if it was an overflow problem. The water saving fluid master has been carefully engineered to save up to one litre of water per flush on top of you fixing that leak. Considering that the average person flushes the toilet five times a day, and we're not even taking into account there after Saturday night after a few pints of nice ale and a lamb bowl tea, and that the average UK household occupancy is 2.5 people, you could be looking at saving over four and a half thousand litres per annum. Right then guys, all in, all brass sewed up. One thing I need to do is just remember to turn that valve off, turn this valve off, then turn the water on, then I press a test, then I'll open these valves up and make sure they're okay. But for now, pop everything back in the boxy wax. Love these boxes, the amount of stuff you can fit in. Right then guys, so the water's back on and we've got no leaks, obviously. Now, I'm gonna turn this on. Now look at how this water comes out of this for a start. That's what I wanted to see first. Look at that. It's got this like twist about it, this vortex. Now look at that, we're just coming to the top now. So we're gonna see the water's gone past our six litre mark. But in a minute, I'll be able to adjust that so we go below that. Six litre mark is just under there now. This is filling up, filling up, filling up. And there we go, we're off. So let's give it a good old flush, see how we get on. And while we're doing that, let's adjust this so it doesn't feel so far. Try and get that below that six litre mark. No leaks anywhere, lovely. That's what I like to see. So there we go, we're now just below our six litre level. Let's see if I can bring that up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna bring that up a bit now. Go on. Well, that's as near as damn it, I'd say. Let's give it a flush. Hey, look at it, I got out there. <laughs> well, guys, this is a setup, isn't it? What a setup, look at it working. Let's get to showing you how we'd change one of these over 
and why it's important to have a valve and a flexi on here. So look, number one, water off, done. Easy, isn't it, when there's a valve there? If there isn't a valve there, you're like, huh, where am I gonna turn the water off? <laughs> so yeah, number one, we just flush everything out of here. Hold the button down. Okay, and that's all off. Don't worry, this toilet roll was for the bra, so I haven't used the toilets yet. I know you lot are light. You'd be like, hey, he's used the loo. What a stinker. <laughs> a stinker malinker. Screws off at the top. Where is the Bosch Beast? And then, this bit's easy now, isn't it? Because all I have to do is take this flexible off. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit of water come out, but we've got our towel down there ready to catch all that. So all that should be fine. Then it's a matter of just getting in, taking those two screws off, and that's the lid off. Okay, I'll undo the two floor ones. Pull that out a bit. Give yourself a bit of room. Let's get round under. I love my job, baby. Oh yeah, I do. Right, as always, I've said this many times before. See, a little bit of water splodging out, but nothing too serious. Tip that into there. And now we can work on this. <laughs> Right, so we'll pop that in. Now, when you put this in, it's a good idea that you look down the end from the top and you say, right, I want to be able to get to that screw head. So that's where I'm going to put my fill valve. Now I know that that's where it's going to go. This is the good thing about using brass shank stuff. You don't have to worry about chewing up the plastic so much. It's a lot easier, isn't it, like this? We're, we're, in, we're in a lot more control of the situation. So that, that just nips up absolutely gorgeous on that. Rubber over it, nice thick o-ring they've put on there. Pop this on. I mean, you, if on a good day, you should be able to get this job pretty much done and dusted within, I'd have said, oh, what would it be? Five, ten minutes would be a good one, wouldn't it? Right, so now we're back in and on. All ready to go again. Let's get the water back on and start filling up. Right, so that's not coming up as high as I'd like for a start. So I'm just adjusting it at the moment so we get it in the right place. I just want to give that a little bit. I'm just making it so it goes higher up to that line that you can see just down there. So we're just trying to get it to that line. And there we go. So now press the button. And this is the laid one here. So you'll watch and see the arm slowly drops down. It starts just to bring it through nice and slowly like that. How about that? Isn't that great? So we've got that air gap there. We've got a nice slow start as well. So there you go, guys. All done. Got two toilets in here flushing away. Just beautifully outside onto the road. <laughs> Making everyone really happy out there at the moment, I'm sure. If you want to get one of these, you're going to be able to find these in our Amazon store. The Air Gap 6000, guys. It's going to get you away from the worry of maybe water backfeeding blue water. You're going to be compliant to BS standard, British standard 1212. Remember, you can get these in plastic and also brass shanked. But you know what I'm going to say, get them in brass shank to right, spend that extra, whatever it is. It's not going to be a lot, probably a pint, you know, cost of a pint. Fully adjustable, easy to work with, easy to install, peace of mind. I love them. I'm going to be fitting them from now on. They're going to be in my van, absolutely class. Um, and they get you through that bit of worry there as well. The air gap works brilliantly. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you've learned just a little bit about, I hope you've enjoyed watching me do a little bit of pipe work, a little bit of four inch pipe as well. You know, it's one of those videos where I wanted to teach you about this, but I thought, you know what, we've got a great opportunity here to learn about a few more things as well. Anyway, I can hear some gorgeous music coming through at the moment. I think that might be a song selected by my patron. Remember, patrons, you have got a chance of winning one of these this Thursday night or next Thursday, as it may be, along with a couple of other Plumber Parts goodies, maybe even a bit of merchandise. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. But it's a great place to be. The Ale Army is kicking off on a Thursday evening at 6.30. I 
a really, really nice community. So if you want to come over there and get involved, 6.30 every Thursday evening for an hour, you get a sneak peek of this video, you get to see the edit, you get to choose the song that's going to be there, you get to chat to some other like-minded people. It's not just open to plumbers, but just people who are interested in the channel, interested in DIY, and just want to have a bit of a chat, and also interested in beer. So anyway, I'll see you in our next video, guys. I'm probably going to do a couple of extra videos, actually, on toilets while I've got them here. So if there's anything you want to know about loos or anything like that, let us know, and I'll see if I'll be able to demonstrate uh, anything that you need to know on these toilets. Also, I'll be popping back to the kitchen cabinet that's just out of the way as well. I'm going to be popping a filter tap on that before we leave the studio for a couple of episodes because we're going to be going out on site at my house. Sorry, Emily. Sorry, George. We're going to be putting a secondary return pump in from Velo. And also, I'm going to be showing you the thought processes that go into adding a radiator onto an existing heating system. That'll be the theory that goes into it a little bit, but also actually doing it and you guys watching me getting it all working and using my Boss GTC thermal camera, which I've been using for COVID as well, to make sure that all that is working. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you subscribe. See you next week. And remember to hold tight. See you soon. Fluid flushes, air gap flushes, yeah, flushes, let's do this, flushes. I was trying to run my taxi the other day To water down the favorite glass of my lovely Beaujolais Who the hell does that? And to my surprise, I had to work out really quick There was some blue water coming out of my faucet Oh my God! Don't buy a new fill valve from Poundland When fluid And also, I'm going to be showing you the thought processes that... And also... <laughs> 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 it's water too when you saw it now, especially when you've done a big fat pool. Yeah, I'd like to thank all my army crew. Thank you guys. Oh, 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 for selecting this song for you. So visit my blog, visit my blog, visit my blog, visit my blog, visit my blog. See you next week, everyone.